Welcome to Talking Giants presented by SeatGeek. I'm your host, Bobby Skinner, here with my co-host, Justin Pennick, And we've got our last episode of the off-season. And it's a mailbag pod, so we got some mailbag questions. Um, we got we got a lot of Titans, like, you know, preview questions. We're just going to say, we are we didn't answer, put any of those on there because we have a Titans preview coming Friday. So we'll dive deep into that Friday, have an interview, have our segments, all that good stuff. Um, so, Justin, how are you feeling, man? Last last podcast of the off-season. Bobby Skinner, we did it, man. <laughs> we we did it. It's been a long road. Uh, you know, Joe Judge being gone, Dave Gettleman being gone. It's a it's a new era, new regime, new breath of fresh air. Um, and I'm ready to rock and roll, man. Uh, I'm very very thankful for everybody following this off season too. Um, there's going to be a lot of influx of hopefully some new people coming in on Friday, and then especially for Monday show. So if you stuck around with us and you're listening now. Uh, really appreciate you, and I'm ready to win some games this year, Bobby Skinner. Let's win some games. A ones from day one, you know. So Joe Shane, Brian Dable are new to this. Who also people who are new, Danny Thomas, who is a uh, Zach Thomas's younger son, who's a Daniel Jones fan. Aaron H. I hope the H stands for something else, but besides when people just say H, mm. Hernandez, Gavin Sh- Gavin Schreiner, not Schneier like Dan Schneier, but Gavin Schreiner, Sean Taggart. And Brian Miga. Justin, who are these people? Heard Aaron Thomas is related to Devin Thomas, Super Bowl champion of the 2011 Well, his game. name's not Aaron Thomas. It's Danny Thomas. Danny Thomas. Why was I thinking Aaron Thomas? Aaron Thomas is a tight end for the Giants that was really good in the 50s, 60s. That's who I was thinking of. Maybe. Patreon.com slash Talking Giants. Um, that's where those wonderful people went. Thank you to our patrons. You get a lot of perks, including you want to be there when we're celebrating a victory Monday, because we're going to beat the Titans. I'm not going to Tennessee to lose. Patreon.com slash Talking Giants. Take it away, Steve. Mail time. Mail time. The mail's here. Come on. Bye, guys. Here's the mail. It never fails. It makes me want to wag my tail. When it comes, I want to wail. <laughs> Thanks, Steve, from Blue's Clues. Justin, let's get into the mail. Zach Jacobs has the first question. If Aaron Robinson struggles significantly, do you think the Giants will try Julian Love at CB2, thinking he can at least be average there? It would make sense, especially if Jefferson or Belton are playing well. I would say no. In a perfect world, it makes sense. And this is the curse that Julian Love has to live with being versatile is, hey, guess what? You may get asked to play a position that's not your best position. But the fact that they moved on from Logan Ryan, Jabril Peppers wasn't resigned. I'm leaving Julian Love at his spot. And that's the strong safety playing a lot of box safety reps. That was where we were probably the most excited out of Julian Love play was 2019 playing box safety at the end of that season when Jabril Peppers went hurt. I'm I'm keeping him there, you know, and we're we you know we talked about on Friday how hey you know we we've heard a lot of like hey this is about playing playing the young guys building for the future it's not about winning uh, every single game that you can for this season. Well, guess what? Tony Jefferson's thirty years old, you know, and he's going to get some dime safety reps. Jason Pinnock is a deep sa- uh, a, de- a deep safety, the guy they claimed, and Dane Belton. While he can play the box, I, I think the box is in his strongest. Uh, position i think it's playing that nickel and and then sometimes deep position so i i want julian love to play the position that he's the strongest at the position that he's practiced at and also i don't think julian love would fare great playing uh and wink martindale's defense as an outside corner either yeah i i'd I'd agree with especially that last point but man but what if though i mean what if uh, is it more likely than not that we are getting to a point where we're just like, it is literally week three or week four of the season. And we just cannot, cannot have Aaron Robinson as an outside corner. But Cordell Flott is maybe splitting reps with Darnay in the slot. And he's not ready to go out to the outside yet. So like part of my brain goes to, it's like we may be in that spot where we were in it in 2019 with watching Grant Haley in the slot, right? And then just trying to pigeonhole that somehow. And we've been in it the last couple of years with this giant secondary at some points where it's just like we just realistically cannot roll this guy out there. Even if the next guy in line 
is just as bad or he doesn't fit, I'm hoping we don't get to that disaster scenario. And Julian Love would be the guy that would make me feel okay if we do get to that spot with Aaron Robinson. Yeah, but we've only seen Julian Love play corner in a Patrick Graham system, which helps that which is a, a system that helps their cornerbacks out. And also lot. in spot starts too. We've never seen him like consistently out there. So yeah, and like the last time we play, we saw Julian Love just play flat out outside corner. Like I think he was targeted six times, gave up five completions versus the Cowboys yeah. um, at the end of 2020. So no, no, I think I think the Giants have have made their bed. Um, they got to lay in it, you know. Fa- you know, they just signed Fabian Moreau, who started 16 games versus the Falcons last year, 28 years old. F- a familiar name. He's, he started 34 games in the NFL. Now, granted, was not good last year. You know, uh, I, I could pull up his numbers, actually. I want to get this right. But, you know, in, in 16 starts last year, they signed him to the practice squad. to uh, assume he gets elevated eventually. But he... Uh, his advanced stats last year was targeted 88 times for 55 completions, 62.5%, 647 yards, 7.4 yards per attempt, eight touchdowns allowed, zero interceptions. You know, I think we're going to get similar production out of Aaron Robinson this year as well. Yeah. Um, maybe some more pass breakups, but uh, we have another Aaron Robinson question. We'll get into it, but but the, the crux of my argument is, you know what, if this year is about letting the young guys play and, and seeing what you have, I don't think we're going to get the best out of Julian Love and see what we have in Julian Love by playing him at outside corner. I think Julian Love needs to be play safety. And if we're satisfied with how he plays, he's not going to be great. It's like, okay, let's bring back Julian Love on a reasonable deal. He's duct tape. We can put him where we needed. He's a reliable player, a successful fourth-round draft pick. Then, uh, then that's what the Giants do. But... You know, Julian Love's on an expiring contract too, and it's. I think it's time for not to just plug him and play. You know, we don't have we don't have a trio of safeties of Xavier McKinney, uh, Logan Ryan, and Jabril Peppers who are all better than Love. You know, uh, you know, we don't have someone who's not like any even remotely part of the future at outside corner and Isaac Yadam. You know, we like there's still some hope for Andrew Robinson to be a player. I, I don't think it's going to happen on the outside in the NFL, but. I, I'm not going to move Julian Love around and and to do that. Um, if I want to get Dane Belton, Justin, uh, Jason Pinnock, and and Tony Jefferson on the field, I will do it in other ways. And we're going to run a lot of three safety uh, sets anyways. Yeah, yeah. I think Julian Love though has already proven that he deserves that new contract though. Like I I don't I don't really consider this year as a prove it year for Julian Love unless he goes out and he plays like he kind of did it towards the end of 2019, right? Where he was playing in the box, where he was playing that just a kind of strong safety role um, towards the end of, you know, that 2019 with James Betcher. So it's just a matter of how much money is Julian Love going to get from the Giants, whether it's going to be kind of like this sneaky little good deal role player, or are we going to pay him maybe like a starting safety should get? So um, I hope that Julian Love to stay around, stick around with the Giants the, a- after this year, regardless of what his role is this year, because I think he's he has proven it. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, and that could be as a depth guy. But again, I I don't want to I don't want to create another hole to f- to fill one. Yeah, um, yeah and, and absolutely. I, I, so part of my answer is in the next question. So let's yeah. let's do the next question. Mason at NYG Mason. With all the concerns over Aaron Robinson, what can Wink do to mitigate his weaknesses? Think he will, or will it be sink or swim? It, there's going to be some sink and swim to it, no matter what. And and this is my answer to the last question. Giants made their bed. Now they got to now they got to lay in it. You know. They decided to roll with these guys, and hey, it's year one. You don't have cap space, so it, it makes sense that there's going to be big weaknesses on this team. But uh, Giants made their bet, and they uh, they got to lay in it. You know, and, and answering the last question, Aaron Robinson hasn't gotten a single nickel corner rep in practice uh, all off season. So you know, the idea that we're going to move just move him back to nickel corner and he'll be fine is also an issue. Um, but the, to the answer this question is that the easy one uh, is McKinney over the top to help. Bracket and double uh, guys because that's what Aaron Robinson's biggest weakness is is vertically he loses the release at the line of scrimmage, and if a guy is running a straight line, it's hard to recover because guess what Aaron Robinson's not the you know the fastest corner in the world. So having uh, uh, Xavier McKinney over the top when you're running some type of uh, zone coverages, you f- you funnel that player to where the zone is. You know if you've got a uh, a curl hook defender, you know and it's it's you know it's cover it's cover two. Play outside leverage, you funnel them in, or, or cover three or whatever. Um, give cloud looks, which means that 
Leave Aaron Robinson as the flat the flat defender. You know, so it, it and you can even do you can do that out of uh, cover two. Cover two, you're always going to be the flat the cloud flat defender in the most part, unless you're inverting it. And cover three, usually you'll, you're that deep third, but you can do that differently. You know, you can have one safety play the deep third, the other play safety play the deep middle, and then the other uh, corner play, you know, Adora Jackson play a deep third. And now you are able to cloud Aaron Robinson and, and obviously cover six is kind of as a mix of four and two. Um, so that's the things that you want to do. But at the end of the day, it's going to be sink or swim with Aaron Robinson. Yeah. Yeah, that's the big wild card heading into the regular season for me because Jerome Henderson uh, talked a lot about during uh, his individual pressers over the, over camp and over preseason that they have intentionally tried to create a very difficult environment, whether it's in preseason games or whether it is in camp for, for these cornerbacks, for these young cornerbacks to see if they will sink or swim. Okay, well, how can Wink Martindale, who's known for being aggressive and is known for sometimes leaving his good secondary players that he's had in the past, you know, leaving them on islands to sink or swim. How is that not, how is he going to protect them a little bit more for this regular season? Because, I mean, they're going to need it. Darnay Holmes is going to need it out of the slot. Aaron Robinson is going to need it. At least, you know, one out of every two throws that comes to him, you know, one of them he's going to allow a catch on. The other one, you know, he's he's going to have a nice pass deflection. We're going to say, ooh, that's a really good Aaron Robinson play, right? So how can 50% of the time Wink Martindale kind of protect him? So that's the biggest wild card for me because we did not see that this preseason. We did not see that this training camp. Those corners have been really asked to, to do a lot. So how will Wink Martindale do it? You described some ways that he can. Um, I'm excited to see how that's actually going to play out week one against Titans. While also stopping the run, too, because because odds are, without Blake Martinez, they're going to have to stack the box, too. How do you balance those two things? So. Yeah, I'm excited for the preview. I'm excited, We have an interview uh, to help preview it. But the Titans are a very weird team right now because it's yeah. kind of like, what are they at this point? Um, but also, I want to say something that on this, too, with Aaron Robinson, going back to something you said earlier, and I put this down as a note. I don't want Aaron Robinson bench this year. I know that it's, you know how it goes. It's play the young guys and then you see the young guys and then you want the young guys out of there type thing with Aaron Robinson. But Aaron Robinson's in year two. I do not want to bench Aaron Robinson. I know cornerback is a position where you need confidence and his confidence could get shot, but you you you, you made your bed lay in it. Uh, okay. I, I don't want to see Aaron Robinson benched out of simply just like, Hey, he's been bad because Fabian Murrow's 28 years old. He's not part of the future and he was bad as well last year for the Falcons. Um, you know, and, and that's a, a similar system, you know, so it's not like Fabian Murrow's going to come in and save the day. I don't want Aaron Robinson benched. I want him to play through his struggles. How long has Murrow been with the Falcons? Last year was his first year. He was with Washington for a couple of years. I think he played for another team as well. No, just Washington. Uh, well, at least just Washington when he started. Maybe he's on the practice squad with another team. But uh, I thought there was some sort of intersection with him and Jerome Henderson. But nope. No, there was not. Right. So, but do you, I mean, I know you you said it, but, you know, Aaron Robinson is not Grant Haley. You know, like Aaron Robinson was the third round pick. Um, and they put him on the outside out. From the nickel spots, because like he's the best on our roster to fill this role. No, I I, I, ag- be- I agree with you, and and that and that's a good point that you brought up. But just based on the trajectory that we've seen this preseason, then even camp that we were there too, like just target after target after target. It's going Aaron Robinson's way. It's going Aaron Robinson's way. Big play, big play. Just plays where he's looking a little lost. Like it's we haven't played a game yet. I I, I know, but it right now it's just heading in that direction. And I hope it changes. Yeah, I, I know. And people are going to call for it, but I, I, I hope the Giants just don't do it because I don't think and, – and, and again, unless, um, you know, we have a, a question about uh, waivers, unless one of those guys that I'll mention um, is like they have actual trust in him. And But I don't want it just being like, hey, he's bad. Let's try something else because I don't yeah. think something else will be a, an answer to them. Um, but what also they could do, they go to SeatGeek, mm. you know, Get, get you, you know, don't get your corners from door, uh, you know, Seat Geek, but you can get tickets from Seat Geek. You can go, you giant scouts can buy tickets on Seat Geek and go watch some corners from Georgia. There was a, there was like a freshman, like a red shirt freshman, I think, I know. that made a true cr- freshman, a cr- true freshman, made a crazy, crazy interception against Oregon this past weekend. So go to a, 
Get some get some uh, tickets to see some Georgia football. Look at our look at some corners. Live events are back, which means you can get twenty dollars off tickets at SeatGeek with promo code Giants. If you don't know what SeatGeek is, they're a ticketing app that makes buying tickets super simple. We've got uh, I've got the app on my phone. Uh, whether it's football, concerts, basketball, baseball, festivals, or more, SeatGeek puts tickets from all over the web in one place to make buying simple. Go to the Titans game. See Justin. SeatGeek rates every ticket from zero to ten to make sure you're getting a good deal. Green means good. Red means bad. Every ticket on SeatGeek is backed by their buyer guarantee, so you can shop for tickets with confidence. Don't worry, we've got the hookup. Use code GIANTS for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first purchase with promo code GIANTS. Make sure you click the link in the description to download the app. Thank you for sponsoring an ad on this show, SeatGeek. Wow. Marcus Lopez at MarcusL28. You mentioned waiver claims. What waiver wire pickup do you think will have the biggest impact short-term? And then which long term? Why don't you say your short term first? Well, I mean, J- Pinnock would be my short term, right? You know, if they're going to use three safety sets. Dane Belton may not be ready to go week one, um, and even Pinnock, you know, he has some, you know, expl- you know, he has some explosiveness to his game. So if the- he wants to come up and make a play in the run game, um, that's my short term one. My short term is going to be Nick McLeod. The guy they claim from the Bills, okay. um, long, you know, tall, long corner fits the the bill uh, for a Wink Martindale corner, and he was challenging to play in the, you know, or, or challenging for a roster spot on the Buffalo Bills. You know, he wasn't just waved like he was always going to be waved type of guy. You know, it's 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 not like Alex Bachman where it's like there's really nothing that guy could have done to earn a roster spot besides guys getting injured. You know, he was challenging for a spot, and again, corners. One corner goes down. Who's the next man up? You know, you got, uh, you know, Lane uh, from Pittsburgh. He's never really uh, earned any playing time in, in three years in the NFL as a third-round pick. So I, I would go short-term Nick McLeod just because, you know what, uh, because, you know, injuries. Cor- uh, you know, Aaron Robinson's missed games every uh, last year. Darnay Holmes uh, has missed games the last two years. Adore Jackson's missed games every year. So I would say Nick McLeod because of injuries. Okay. And then long term, my answer is Jason Pinnock because I just think he's the best of the bunch. Like he he has talent. He looked de- he looked decent as a deep safety last year for the Jets. And again, he was a he was switching from cornerback in college at, at University of Pittsburgh. Um, so I just think he's the best of the bunch. But the reason I didn't give him the short term answer is you do have your two starting safeties in McKinney and Love. We expect those guys to play all year. They did draft Dane Belton in the fourth round. They just got Tony Jefferson on the practice squad. I would expect him to be playing at some point as as they, you know, the the dime back, you know, playing in the box a little bit. So I just think because Jason Pinnock plays more deep safety and they have, you know, a guy they draft in the fourth round in Dane Belton, that I, I, I don't have him as a short term, but I think he's just the best of the waiver claims in general. So I'm gonna say he's the best, uh like the most he'll have the most impact long term. Is it a lock that Tony Jefferson is just going to be signed eventually after the first two weeks of the season? Because a lot of people have said it, but it's like, well, then who's going to be the one that goes down, gets waived? Like, what's going to be that corresponding move? Well, I mean, some of those things end up taking care of themselves. Uh, But you get two practice squad elevations, you know, so you don't have to worry about that the first two weeks of the season. And then you kind of you figure it out from there. Yeah. but yeah, I would expect Tony Jefferson, unless he comes out the first half boost and doesn't look good, um, then then that could be different. But Tony Jefferson is, I would assume, is, is part of this team this, uh, for the season. Yeah, because if Tony Jefferson is part of this team and he is elevated, I, I would say for lo- long term, he's mine. Like, you know, I, I think the you were describing him and the, the first player that came to mind was Deion Grant. An older guy that's lost a step that they're putting in the box that can do that can do some good things for you. So um, Tony Jefferson's my my long term my long term guy. All right, wait, long term? D- yeah, like lo- like the waiver wire pickup that will have the He's biggest. Thirty years impact. old though. Well, are are we are we thinking long term being this season? Like, is that Marcus's- I was thinking like long term like. Two, three years from now, which one of these guys has the best chance to stick around? Oh, I, oh, I have a hard time believing that any that anybody that's a waiver wire claim can be a future piece of a franchise. But okay, I was I was just thinking this season, long term, this season instead of week to week. Okay, I guess. Okay, that's fine. 
Yeah, which that's is why good. I said Pinnock. Like Pinnock is going to have the the impact short term, meaning like the first few weeks of the season, then Jefferson for the rest of the season. Did you think about Tyree Phillips being it at all? Because I thought about that, but I'm also like, you know what? Maybe I don't know if he's going to play. Um, unless yeah, I don't. Really, yeah, again, really I don't. Injured. There's Bredesen that's on the depth chart above him. There's Devery Hamilton. There's Josh Azudu. And I know some of those guys are hurt to begin with. But even if some of those guys are hurt, I don't even know if Tyree Phillips sees the field. So, Yeah. So that uh, that's that. Next question. Next question. ASA Panth asks, how do you expect the tight ends to be deployed week one? Did we Is miss it- a question? No, I did not miss a question. I think we missed a question. Unless I didn't put it in there. Nope, I missed a question. Yep, Manti's question. Manti, sorry, going to get back to you, ASA Panth. Manti's question, Manti, Manti Tobogan at Dr. Mantis 44. Can you guys do a segment each week on QB prospects, like how they performed the past week? Um, so the answer to that is no. But I'm glad this was asked because uh, because I do want to talk about that. Because, you know, college football started the first weekend and there's no NFL. So, every, you know, like I don't watch college football every weekend, but I always watch this past weekend, you know. So you're watching the QBs and um, there's also like a lot of arguing online, which I think is kind of silly. Like, you know, Joe Shane did decline Daniel Jones option. Like, you know, the. The quarter, like we should be watching the quarterbacks. We don't make the decision, but it's like, hey, it's it's you were fans. We want to see what's in the future. So I, I do think, um, but I kind of wanted to give my mindset on on these QBs, uh, you know, and, and you could chime in. So and and what we'll do is one, we're not going to just give box score like just watch these guys updates anyways. Like we pride ourselves on really doing the homework and not just kind of being casual about it. Um, uh, and that's why the the guys who are like the top two right now in everyone's eyes, Bryce Young and CJ Stroud, for me, you're not going to get really any opinion on those guys uh, in season unless they stink it up because those guys played Alabama and Ohio State. And it makes it a lot easier for those guys to be uh, very successful. And when they make mistakes, they get hidden. Um, you know, like, you know, there's like, you know, uh, uh, we watched Alabama and Ohio State players this last year. I'm like, man, Bryce Young had some plays here. But you know what? They're able to take a shot the next play, and it it gets erased. Um, so those guys, I, I want to I, – I think those guys should be nitpicked. Like, I think people get mad when you nitpick some of the QBs. But I think those two should be nitpicked because, you know what? Like, it's going to get a lot more difficult for those guys compared to every other QB um, coming from college to the NFL. You know? Like, Daniel Jones was, like, a fairly, like – solid evaluation because it's like man this guy just had shit around him so it's like we can we know what this guy's at least going to deal with somewhat in the nfl um so those guys i do think they uh you know you don't punish them because they play in those systems but you i think you got to nitpick so those guys i'm not going to watch really at all until the season's over and, and really like go through all 22 with them the one who i am watching though and is exciting me is anthony richardson one, because we did a little work on him in our way too early draft previews, Justin. Um, and, he, you know, we like he's cleaned up some of his mechanics. You can see that without watching all 22. Like he's cleaned up some of his mechanics, um, you know, and, and he always go, went through progressions when he threw last year and 65 attempts. Like it was impressive with him. Uh, but also he did have what we talked about with him, too, is under pressure, a third down you know, run, you know, uh, rolling to his left and his footwork collapses and he almost throws it. He, you know, an interception gets dropped on a bad, on a bad throw. So he's still got that stuff to work on. But Anthony Richardson is the one where I'm watching and I'm like, ah, it's hard for me to not get excited and just hold out till the year's over and, and then give my full evaluations on these guys. Yeah. Richardson's super fun. Um, you know, the way that he drives the ball too. And, you know, there, uh, there's even some – I saw some nitpick points of, you know, just – flies out of his hand. It's ridiculous. Just the highlight plays where even some people saying besides these highlight plays, there are still some things he has to work on but still showing growth from last year. That was his first start. That was his first, like, full-time start at Florida, and he had those just wowza insane plays. And the, the really what I want to – what I want to see out of the next Giants quarterback because this is really what separates the top-tier NFL quarterbacks in the National Football League right now and then the Kirk Cousins of the world – the Derek Carrs of the world, blah, blah, mid quarterbacks, right? Your ability to improvise 
your ability when shit breaks down, what can you do with the football? Can you still make a play out of it? Can you break containment? And I'm not talking about just running for 10 to 15 yards, even though Anthony Richardson can do that. But can you, you know, what what like Russell Wilson does, what Aaron Rodgers does, what even freaking Tom Brady does, just able to manipulate the pocket and keep a play alive for as long as possible, regardless whether it is inside the pocket or like Wilson, Rogers, all these guys that do it outside the pocket. So that is what I'm looking at of the next Giants quarterback. And Anthony Richardson, for sure, can absolutely. I mean, the touchdown that he had where he's just breaking tackles, breaking tackles, still keeping his eyes down the field. I mean, that's just shit that you just can't teach. And that's what I want out of my next quarterback. So, yeah, there and you then go. some of the other ones like Tyler Van Dyke uh, with what I've seen from, you know, I'm a Miami fan, but like he would need to be surgical and really like lead Miami to wins uh, with his playing style. Will Levis, I, he's a guy I need to watch more. I watched a lot of Kentucky last year with Wandale, Darren Kennard, and um, even Luke Fortner, and I, I wasn't the biggest fan, but you know, I could be convinced. Phil Jerkovich, I'm, I'm not a fan. But basically, the the long answer, long story short with this is no. Like I, 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 We pride ourselves on our draft work of doing it and not just parroting what others are saying and, and box score and highlight watching. Um, so I will... You know, once the season's over is when you'll see at least us, like, really dive into it. But, like, yesterday, you know, Saturday was first weekend of college football. I was watching Richard and stuff. It's like, it's 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 basically to not get excited watching that cat. Absolutely. Absolutely. NFL and is... And Duke QB Riley Leonard. Oh, boy. We got a lot of ads on the show, guys. Please forgive us. Duke, he, <laughs> he went, like, 24-30, led the team in rushing. And I'm like, dude, we got ourselves another Dukey. Is he wearing uh, number seventeen too? No, I, I forgot what number he. Was. I only, I literally only watched one throw because I, I made a troll t- uh, tweet. Sure, uh, but uh, you know what? Like the Mike Elko era of, of Duke football has has started well. Hashtag Duke Gang started well. College football's back. NFL football is back. We're back to seeing Patrick Mahomes sling beautiful balls all over the field. And your friends at Manscaped are here to help you sling your beautiful balls all season long with Manscaped's state-of-the-art tech. We'll have your weapon looking more loaded than the AFC West. That's tough. NFC West plays the AFC West this year. I think the Cardinals are a team that's trending downward. Football talk. Football may be tough, but your ball care doesn't have to be with Manscaped. Join the 6 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped by going to manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping with the code GIANTS. The best valued bundle yet for the Manscaped's pocket rockets. The Platinum Package. That's new. Platinum Package? The Lawnmower 4.0 Trimmer. A wily vet who makes sure the unit is running smooth and scoring nonstop. With proprietary advanced skin safe technology, the lawnmower limits mistakes and protects the ball, plus it's waterproof so the weather conditions are no issue. You have the weed whacker, you have the crop reviver ball toner, you have the ultra premium body wash and ultra premium two-in-one shampoo and conditioner. There's so many products that Manscaped has. It's overwhelming. I recently used the nose hair trimmer. It worked fantastic for me. I want you to get 20% off with free shipping. Use the code GIANTS at checkout. Free shipping at manscaped.com when you use code GIANTS and 20% off Manscaped for turning your player into an MVP. All right. Thanks, Manscaped. Next question. Next question is coming from ASA Panth. We teased it a little earlier. How do you expect the tight ends to be deployed week one? It is obvious we are incredibly short there. Thanks for everything this camp season. You're welcome. Um, and that's the end. No. Um, <laughs> that's the end of the episode. So Daniel Bellinger is clearly tight end, obviously, right? Um, we got to talk about I don't think you're, you're not going to see a ton of, you know, the route tree from Daniel Bellinger. You know, they're going to use him on quick, you know, five yard ends, some crossing routes and stuff too. you know, use him as a check down on those uh, curls or sit routes. Um, you know, you're, you're just, you're not going to see a ton from him because he's not the most athletic guy in the world and they're, and they're going to use him as, as a blocker. Um, what position is Chris Myrick listed on the roster as, Bobby? Do you know this? Fullback. He's listed as a fullback. Tanner Hudson is a tight end. So that throws a little wrench into some things, I guess. Yeah, but I think Chris Myrick is the tight. Like, when they're running two tight end 12 personnel, um, I think Chris Myrick's going to be on the field. 
Okay. You know, you get two guys who are capable of blocking. Chris Meyer, he's going to play that H-back role, um, at least for now, until maybe they're able to bring Andre Miller back at some point with an injury settlement uh, or after the injury settlement. Um, but I, he, so Chris Myrick's going to get the H back, you know, fullback duties. Uh, but I think when we, when we see two tight end sets on Sunday, I think it's going to be Daniel Bellinger and Chris Myrick. Do you agree? Unless their plan is to throw the ball out of those sets, then Tanner Hudson's going to, going to be in there without a doubt. Well, that's my question is because we didn't see really much of Tanner Hudson at all. Do you think there is some plan for Tanner Hudson week one? Like, is there like, hey, like we want to run four verts. Let's get Tanner Hudson out there. We want this guy on a deep cross. Uh, let's get Tanner Hudson out there because he moves better. He's a better receiver than those other two guys. Yeah, but you he can't say block. This, I, and now I know Chris Myrick was in there for the entirety of camp. So this this may be an irrelevant point. But we really didn't see much of Chris Myrick during preseason either doing much of anything, right? We, but he ran a lot with the first team. Like even F- Fan Fest, like they were running two tight end sets. It was cr- like Fan yeah, Fest, like said, t- yeah. for, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, like Chris Myrick and Daniel Bellinger were f- splitting first team reps. Yeah, you know, and that was with Andre Miller still in as yeah. the H back. Tanner Hudson also showed up his first day of practice and caught the longest ball of the summer. So, yeah, I know that's what I'm asking. It was like, do you think there was like any packages for Tanner Hudson? On on Sunday, not you know, I'm not talking is. about week five, week six. I hope I, ho- I hope there is, so, you know, something that really throws you off a little bit. Um, you know, especially it, it they're was, not going to be planning for our tight ends. You get a guy who right. can move out. You know, it was funny. So. It was funny that Joe Shane, you know, when being asked why do you have seventeen thousand wide receivers on the roster, you know, he he gets close to the microphone. And he says offensive coach. Um, <laughs> so I thought that was funny. So they're going to be expecting these wide receivers. They're going to expecting these four wide receiver sets. Um, so let's throw Tanner Hudson out there every once in a while, and if he can go and catch that ball down the field, let's not ask him to be a run blocker. Let's not pull this uh, this Evan Ingram thing again, where we're going to be putting a guy on the field that just can't run block, but we're going to try and throw defenses off. I guess um, put Chris Myrick out there, put Daniel Bellinger out there. If you want to, if you want to run the ball, then you know split Tanner Hudson out wide. If you really want to, you know, if you want to give a defense a different kind of look. All right, next question. Alex Casanova at Casano Pants. Great handle. Bar fight alongside any member of the current Giants, who would you pick? There's not a lot of guys that you pick from where it's like, ooh, I, I, I got one. I feel like the easy answer is the one you're going to say, right? No, no. You you don't even know where I'm going with this. We'll go with it. Cam Brown. Cam Brown. Oh, that actually is not the worst one. Dragon John Feliciano out. The dude is ripped. And yeah, he's the most cut up dude on the team, he and he's is. big too. We uh, we have uh, we have similar physiques, uh, Cam Brown and I, and uh, kind of low key aggressive, a little feisty. So I'm going with Cam Brown without a doubt. Yeah, maybe Cam Brown if we we're boxing. I feel like Feliciano, you want in a bar fight though, because part of being in a bar fight is being grimy. You know, like did Dallas Goddard expect me to punch him in the face in South Dakota? No, came out South of nowhere. Dakota? No. I sucker punched him. He got to be mm-hmm. a little grimy. Um, Jack so Anderson, Felicia- the new lineman. Yeah, I got to get to know Jack Anderson. Got to get to know him. Yeah. Get to know him a little more. So Feliciano would be it. I also threw Kadarius Tony in there. Like, sometimes it's just, like I said, it's the mindset. Like, we saw Kadarius Tony throw a punch in Dallas and something that didn't involve him. So it's the mindset. And then obviously Nick Gates you want there, but I didn't count him since he's currently not on the on the 53 man um but between feliciano gates and and tony were were the ways i went you know who wants to fight me an ad no just buying more time until we have to read another ad who notre dame fans yeah it's um i want to be canceled by notre dame fans one day like that's that's how i want to go out I, I, I don't care about college football fandom too much, but Notre Dame fans, like, they are, like, they get really mad. Psychotic. Yeah. My thing is, I think Notre Dame fans should have a higher expectation of what Notre Dame is. Yes. Like, you, sh- you should be battling for, like, like wh- why why can't Notre Dame compete with Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State? Great you question. Know? They don't have an answer like, for it. So I, I, I don't, I don't, like, I, I, I think that I think that they have the program that they should be able to compete with those guys and recruit with those guys. Um, 
you know, um, if, if your comeback to me is you're a Rutgers and a Nebraska fan as to me calling Notre Dame pathetic because they can't beat anybody good over the last, I don't know, decade. If that's your comeback, that's a pretty low. That's a low. That's that's more of a reflection on you than it is on me. Yeah. But at the same time, that's that's fandom as well. Um, I, I just think Notre Dame fans should raise their expectations. Like you guys should get you guys should be in the national championship con, uh conversation not just like you're the fourth best team in the in college football yeah. conversation well, i'm sorry i forgot there's only five good football teams in college football okay yeah but anytime you play a top five team you get blown out yeah so or you they're score like, 10 points so they're good compared to uh um like everyone else but they're not on the level of the top ones which i guess it, that's the thing that sucks about college football though is that you can be better than 98 percent of college football teams but it's like you can't even hang with the top one percent no and i'm gonna get canceled one day by notre dame fans all right so we have a lot of ads on this show guys so please don't get mad at us but we're doing this so you don't have to listen to a bunch when the season starts um and if you bet on the over under of three and a half ads on this show i hope you bet the over (laughs) Football fans, the first Sunday of NFL season is here, and DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of NFL, is giving new customers a can't-miss offer to celebrate the return of the NFL season. Right now, new customers can bet just $5 and get $200 in free bets instantly. And as an added bonus for Week 1, everyone can experience the thrill of DraftKings' early win promotion. It's simple. Bet on an NFL team to win. If your team leads by uh, by 10 at any point during the game, you get paid instantly, even if your team loses. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code JOHNBOY to get $200 in free bets instantly when you place a $5 bet this Sunday. That's code JOHNBOY only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. All right, next question. At uh, Bengal Prince, WTF was the Blake Martinez release about? So I was not satisfied with the reporting. On the Blake Martinez thing. Shock. Because we just got... It was mutual. It was mutual. And I'm like, but what does mutual mean? And I even asked one person. I was like, what does mutual mean? And they're like, that means that they, it, both parties agree to it. But I was like, yeah, but... Yeah, no why shit, Sherlock. Did, why did we get to this point to where it was mutual? You know, like, why did Blake want out? And did, why did the Giants want him out? It's because... Because there was obviously, because there's an unknown, there's a lot of things we go through our heads, and, and I went through them all too. Like, the system was already in place, so him not being a scheme fit doesn't make sense for what this to happen. You know, you lost cap space, so it doesn't really help with the current cap situation where they're going to have to restructure somebody this week. Um, it was two days after the 53-man roster uh, was put together. You know, so it wasn't even like he was one of the 53 man cuts. Like he was on the roster two days after. So what happened? You know, and it's not about playing the young guys because Crowder and McFadden would both be better players playing next to Blake. Um, you know, and like the idea that uh, Blake subbing out for Beavers at the start of camp wasn't for rehab is just not true. Like that's that's a flat out lie. And again, Darren Beavers is, is not on the team. Um, so I, I asked some people, and I didn't ask beat reporters because I knew. You know how it is. Their connections are in guys who have been in the building, coaches and stuff, more so than players. Um, I, I, so I, I asked people who might know Blake's point of view, and I think Blake is kind of keeping it to the vest because that's kind of the guy who Blake is. He doesn't want to trash anybody. But I think Wink was just, from what I've gathered, Wink was, and, and this isn't like 100% reliable, so I don't want people to quote me on it. But the vibe I got from talking was Wink was kind of a dick to Blake from the start. Um, you know, and, and, and like from the start, whether it was he didn't, he didn't like his personality, whether it's because, you know, Blake is kind of a, you know, he's a little more of a corny dude, uh, you know, than most. Uh, I, I, but they just, they, you know, Wink was kind of a dick from the start and they just never got along, you know, and this wasn't about that. They just want to let the young guys play, uh, you know, so, but that that does disappoint me because I'm not going to let the fact that Blake is Blake isn't Lawrence Taylor or most likely going to be here in 2023 keep me from saying that, you know, you restructured the guy, you brought him back. We were all okay if you would have just cut him in March. That I I wish there would have been more of an effort to for them to see eye to eye. You know, that's part of coaching too is connecting with your players and stuff. So, um, you know, for and 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 a, and a nice guy like Blake too. You know, 
like you may not be the guy you want to hang out with the most, you know, based on, you know, people's certain personalities. But, you know, Blake's not a bad guy. He's not a guy who's going to, uh, he's not like, I don't think he's someone who's super emotional where one little slight could cause him issue, cause him to have issues. So, uh, I, I, that's part of being a coach and I, I can't, I can't let the, I can't lie and say I'm not disappointed that that's the way it ended. Yeah, good player too. And yeah, you know, like you said, not Lawrence Taylor, not Harry Carson when you compare him to those two guys, but when you compare him to Tay Crowder and Micah McFadden, uh, Blake Martinez is certainly a good player when you compare him to those two guys. So it does suck that they, that they couldn't work it out, especially because they did rework something in March. That that's the thing that that really stinks about that. If they just did it in March and they cut it, you know, they cut it, they cut it cold turkey. Then, cool, you did it for cap space. Um, but you know, it, it is it is what it is at, at this point with Blake Martinez. Uh, they yeah, they made it like you, stop, like you but- said with the secondary room, Bobby. They made their bed. Now they're gonna lie in it. They had the worst rushing defense in the NFL last year without Blake Martinez. They cut him again this year. They're not going to have him again. Tay Crowder is going to be linebacker one. They have made their bed. They're going to lie in it. And we'll see what happens. Blake Martinez, um, Wink Martindale certainly is a scheme upgrade in terms of stopping the run versus Patrick Graham. But Wink Martindale is also a downgrade as to stopping the explosive pass play over Patrick Graham. So we'll get With to find out. With the personnel they have. We'll get to find out um, you know, how, how important um, each one of those things is this year. Yeah, with with the personnel, I will I will with Wink Martindale with the pass because Wink yeah. Martindale's had some great passing defenses when he had the personnel. Yeah, um, you know. So again, like I I I went through all of the reasons and tried to figure out, and um, it's just it, that's the vibe I got. And again, that's from people who probably had Blake side or so, but it uh just seemed like Wink was. A, and again, I, I'm not I'm not asking Wink Martindale to love Blake Martinez, but like you said, they. They restructured it, and this isn't going to be the downfall of of the Giants. You know, like uh, you know, they're going to make mistakes along the way. Um, it just it's it sucks that this is how it ended because it, yeah. it didn't have to end this way. Yeah, I agree with that, Bobby. Because we have time, I'm going to add um, a, a mailbag question in here. Um, Joe Smith at Giants fan in DC. He asks, how many Giants? Uh, how many games will the Giants score thirty plus points? Um, also, will Justin kind of cream himself? Ooh, strong visual. The first time he sees orbit motion used in the red zone in a game. Um, I am hoping that, like, from week one, from right away, that we see some fun stuff, whether it is on, inside the red zone. Like, I, I kind of want game one, week one. Like, let's let's see this stuff that you've been practicing. Let's see some fun and exciting stuff. That would be really cool to inject some energy in the fan base. And I do hope that one of these first two games, I'm not going to say 30 points, but I'm hoping that we have one of these first two games that the offense does have a, a positive scoring outlet day. Like that would be really, that would be obviously really fun, really cool, really exciting, especially against the Carolina team, home opener at home against Carolina team that is just flat out not very good. So um, that would be great. They scored 30 points three times in 2019. Do you think we get more than that? Yes. I do too. You got a, a week. I think you probably get four 30 point outputs. Uh, yeah. You know, you have an improved offensive line. Wide receiver group on paper is good. You know, uh, Daniel Jones is, is, we'll see exactly what he is, but, you know, he's, he's an, he's a guy, you, he's a guy who's not going to just totally nuke you. Um, so they did that three times in 2019. I can see them doing it four times this year. Yeah. Um, and, and that leads into the next question, too. Yeah. West Lock at Wesley Westicles. Uh, what Wes does every single mailbag is he asks one question that he knows that we will not answer, and then one question that he knows we we will answer. We picked the one that he knew that we were going to ask. Follow up from the March 25th mailbag from 2022. Bobby went offense and Justin went defense. Based on the current roster, which unit will perform better in 2022? Wings defense or Dable Kafka offense i mean you gotta agree with me now it's the offense right yeah I, I i do agree with you and i actually went back and i listened to my reasoning my reasoning was is that wink martindale um like who's more of a respected coordinator and play caller in the nfl is it wink martindale or is it brian dable and i would 
still say that Wink Martindale is the more respected play caller, but there is obviously a reason why one is our head coach and one is our defense coordinator, where I feel like Brian Dable is just maybe the more respected, just overall coach in the NFL right now, where one, you know, the one coordinator has had a little bit more, a little bit more success. You mentioned that people in Baltimore were really hesitant that Wink Martindale was leaving versus some, some people in Buffalo, you know, there was a little strife and there was a little tension between him and McDermott. Um, at the time, I was not sold on Saquon Barkley being efficient and running north and south. Um, that definitely has changed after watching this training camp. I'm thinking Saquon Barkley is going to have a it's going to have a pretty solid season efficiency wise. I'm thinking I'm back. Um, what else? What else did I say there? I mentioned the health of the wide receiver room. Uh, did not think a Blake Martinez release was coming, and even in March 25th, I still said defense over offense, even without. Kayvon Thibodeau being drafted to the team yet. So um, I must have been really, I must have been really low on Saquon that day. <laughs> well, we why. knew they were going to get some help from defense in the first round. Like we knew they weren't going to go offense, offense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we just were praying. Hey, remember, we said like we've, we've got to get an offensive tackle a- a- out of this draft. And, maybe, and maybe I was thinking that they would make more defense, like more defensive upgrades. For like this year at that time, like maybe I was thinking that a safety was coming. Um, was Logan Ryan released yet? Yes. Yeah, I th- I'm pretty sure that was like a week or so in the end of free agency. So yeah. Okay. All right. So so that I definitely do change my mind right now. Um. So yeah, the offense is the, the defensive personnel issues are are just glaring. You know, linebacker is huge. Edge. You know, both our edge ones are. Probably going to miss week one, it, it looks like at this point. We'll see when the yeah. practice report comes out uh, later this week. Um, we'll get a better sense of it. You know, uh, you got less uh, depth on on the D-line after Leonard Williams and, and Dex than years past. The secondary is going to be an issue, too. So, it's the, like, on the offense, you, you don't – one, offense, you don't have to have the greatest personnel in the world to be efficient at times. So I just think the offense is going to ha- be fun at at points during this season. So uh, I, I think that where I don't, uh, but again, I could also be like you know walk away from that stretch of four horrible Q, you know bad QBs we play and being like man Wink, that was a fun four game stretch watching Wink Martindale just just blitz the piss out of quarterbacks. So yeah, I'm um, not sold on the. Like I'm not sold on I'm sold on the offense like which unit will perform better in 2022 I'm sold on the offense performing better than the defense but I'm just not totally gonna change my mind because the quarterbacks that we are playing are really bad and Wink Martindale is going to make them really really uncomfortable so um, I'm I'm excited to see see that working um to see that in gear what have, what was I gonna say what is our edge rusher depth chart. Um, without Aziz and Kayvon. It's Jihad Ward. Oshane Zimenez and Timon Fox. Timon Fox. So those three? Yeah. If if both those guys miss, um, a guy named Quincy Roche might get elevated from the practice squad. Who? Yeah, I don't know. Who Uh, is that? Never never cared about him. He's not Lawrence Taylor, so who gives a shit about him? (laughs) Who gives a shit? (laughs) Uh, But... Uh, anything else, Justin? No, we'll, we'll we'll talk about Bear Burger and then we'll mess around for a minute or two. Then get out of here. Um, you'll hear from Danny King on Friday. Um, so I'm really really excited for our game preview. Bear Burger, got to talk about them. They're a burger joint, but they're not the type to be bogged down by the labels. Their menu is filled with options for everyone, regardless of dietary preferences. So whether you're 100% vegan or you think that the Giants are going to lose Week One, or you're craving one of our elk burgers. They won't judge at Bell Burger. There's only one dietary restriction you'll be limited to. That's food that is made to taste great. You can create your own favorite burger. They take burgers very seriously at Bear Burger, but our menu is filled with options for all. Build your own creation and let us know. John, Bo- there we go. They're, they're, they are now saying it in the actual ad read. Let us know. That John Boy sent you, and then tweet it to at Bear Burger for a chance to win a Bear Burger gift card. This is huge. There has already been. Pe- so how about this? Here's I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a little. But don't hint just say here. John Boy. You gotta say Talking Giants. John at John Boy and Talking Giants. So if you have already tweeted at Bear Burger that you've already been there, just do it again. Just do it again, and then you'll be entered for a gift card. I'm telling you to do that. So what I want yeah. you to do is click the link in our description to find yourself at the best happy hour 
tastiest burger joint and overall great spot. Order.bearburger.com, Bear Burger Kitchen and Bar. You'll be glad you did. You'll be glad you did. Um, where everyone knows your name, Bear Burger. Where everybody knows your um, name. All right, so we got a preview pod coming out on Friday. I'm very excited for that. Um, I guess we could give, since we got a couple minutes, we can kind of give you a, a schedule release for what we are once the season starts. Two channels, by the way. Yeah, two channels. Make sure to subscribe to the John Boy Media Football channel. Starting next week, we will have very consistent content coming out of there. It's the old talking football channel that we put the draft breakdowns on this past year. Um, so podcast-wise, Monday, game recaps. Uh you know, we uh, we don't just go right after the game either, but we take our time. You know, we we let it digest for a few hours, look up numbers, rewatch, and try and give you the best that you can get on uh, uh, that for Monday. Wednesday is mailbag. Uh, if you want to get uh, a mailbag question in, I will put out a tweet every Tuesday from the Talking Giants account, probably around 10 a.m., 11 a.m. Um, for that. And then Friday is a preview pod where me and Justin break down the game for 20 minutes. We bring on an interview uh of someone else that cover that someone that covers the other team and then Danny King joins us we do segments where we we do we look at we do a fantasy draft of the team we're playing of the Giants and the opponent which I think is a good way to highlight matchups and give us some competition giant factors which is like x factor quick uh, our pick them and then Giants uh score predictions where I may do the same prediction every single week uh, that and then maybe O-line rep- on YouTube, O-line report out Tuesday at 11, film review out, uh, not exactly sure when, and, and we'll have other content out, uh, and I know you're going to do your stat report, so. Yeah, stat we'll, reports on Wednesday. We're going to be hitting you. It might even, you know, we do some live streams on, uh, too, during the week, so we will have plenty of content for you guys, content for you, uh, once the season gets started. Yeah. App- appreciate you guys hanging out with us all off season. Whoa, 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 whoa. I have news. Marcus Johnson to the practice squad? Yeah. Let's look up his stats real quick. Let's look up his stats. And I'll tell you about the JM Football Channel, too. Um, I don't want to give you a day-by-day breakdown, but everything that you like about football, which is big plays, big interceptions, big runs, offensive line. I mean, if you're a talking Giants fan, if you're a Bobby Skinner fan, uh, if you're a Hog Molly fan, um, or I guess Dirtbags is, is now the formal word, um, you're gonna like the talking. You're gonna like the JM Football Channel. No longer called Talking Football. Almost just said it myself. Um, JM Football Channel. You're gonna have the Chris Rose Football Show with CJ Uzama there too. Uh, but Bobby Skinner, we're gonna do some uh, fun. He's gonna do some fun breakdowns, and then you know, intern Julian and I, we're gonna edit them up every week, and they're gonna go on that channel. So interceptions, explosive plays. Big runs, O line spotlight, matchup videos, all that stuff is going to go on that channel. Marcus Johnson stats. Five and five years, 51 catches, 839 yards, three touchdowns, 16 and a half yards per catch. Played with uh, the Eagles to start, the Colts for three years, and then the Titans last year. So he's just here to give us a, a look at the Titans. He's going to give Steeler playbook. So love that. Uh, Big so brain Marcus move. Johnson to the practice squad. So we appreciate you guys hanging with us all off season. Um, It's going to be a good year. It's going to be better than last year. I I know that for damn sure. So we appreciate you guys. Should we do our our actual record predictions for the year right now, quick? Yes. I was thinking about... No. Start of next show. How about that? More people will be listening. No, let's just do it now. Okay, let's do it now. I, I, I thought about moving mine down, but I'm going to stay sturdy at 6 and 11. Over under seven and a half. I'm going eight and nine. There we go. All right. We appreciate you guys. We'll be back on Friday with a game preview. Uh, We appreciate you. We'll see you then. Until then, let's go big blue.